What is up everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the middle of November in 2019. And as you guys read in the title, yes, we're also going to be breaking down the natural gas report, talking about some of those numbers, as well as you guys in gas and one stock in particular that I've been buying pretty heavily here over the past couple of uh, trading days and honestly over the past couple of weeks. So sit back, relax. All I ask from you is if you enjoy the video, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me. And if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community, the Discord chats down below, the Facebook group, the Instagram, Twitter, all of that good stuff and the merch is linked down below. So without further ado, guys, Let's just get right into it uh, with about 16 minutes left in the market today. The S&P is up $2.76, 265 now, up about 0.09%. So overall, today's kind of been uh, a choppy day, right? On the daily chart, you can see, you know, we tested 3095, which was the resistance from yesterday. We failed to break out. You know, we sold off all the way down to about 3083, uh, which kind of was a support yesterday, which is a good good sign that we held it that was positive um, you know now we're testing again that 3095 level with about 10 15 minutes left in the market and I think, guys, you know, and it seems like it's already doing this, but I think if we push up into the close, that's going to be a very bullish close. And let me explain why, um, and you'll be able to see for yourselves if we go to that 30-day, or not the 30-day, the 30-minute chart, um, the 10-day 30-minute chart. So you can see, you know, the S&P has been trading in the channel of, again, 3083 to about 3095, so around a 12, 15-point window um, over the past couple of days and I think you know if we get that pop that's going to be the technical break that we need to see before we a test you know the old all-time high at 3100 and B potentially get to a new all-time high if we break that level. So this is looking bullish in my opinion. You know, the S&P, obviously the markets in general, they've been running up so heavily over the past couple um, of weeks. So the fact that we've been kind of consolidating over the past couple of days, that makes sense, right? So I'm watching for that breakout. If we don't get that breakout, um, you know, maybe we pull down and retest 3085 and ultimately break that. If that happens, you know, we may see a further correction here um, in the S&P. We may be going down to 3075, putting us on that 180 SMA here on the 30-minute chart. Um, you know, in the hourly chart, you can see again, um, you know, 3070 is a strong level, maybe even down to about 3045. That's possible, which would put us on the 180 SMA here on the hourly chart. Those are a couple of things that, um, you know, I'm keeping in my mind if we do get that sell off. But again, as of now, um, especially if we close up bullish here in the next couple of minutes, I see more upside in the S&P. So the Dow Jones industrial average here, guys, down about $6.29 right now. Um, down about 0.02%. Nothing really crazy, not much movement whatsoever um, in terms of the Dow. And if we break it down on the 10-day chart, um, you can see it's kind of in a similar scenario, although it's not in a horizontal channel um, like the S&P. Um, it's, it's at a resistance nonetheless, right? It's at a resistance at about 27,800, you know, even though um, it's not in a horizontal pattern. So I want to see a similar price move um, in the Dow Jones, right? I kind of want to see it break out of, of that all-time high and ultimately get to a new high and uh, really just continue the uptrend. That's ideal right now for the bulls, you know. Of course, holding that 50 SMA on this 30-minute chart is ideal as well. If we go to that hour chart, holding this 50 SMA is crucial as well. So these are just a couple of levels that I'm watching, right? If we pop all-time high, that's all gravy, right? But if we see a further correction, we break that 50 SMA, especially here on the hourly chart. Um, to the downside, we may be seeing a further sell-off. Uh, you know, some levels that I'm watching, like I mentioned in yesterday's video, 27,500 is huge, right? This was a support we held on the 11th of November. You know, we actually uh, topped off there as a resistance on the 5th of November before breaking out of it. So that's also, that, that's also a reason why 
provide some major support. So uh, yeah, 27,500, um, 27,350, 400. You know, that's just a general area. Um, if we were to see a pull down, that the Dow Jones could potentially get to. So the Nasdaq guys, nothing much at all down. Literally not even down. It's up now a uh, dollar on the day. A dollar, a nice dollar. Now 50 cents up 0.01 percent. So not much movement at all. Um, you know, it's clearly on an uptrend, riding the moving averages. You know, we actually pulled down. I believe this was today, um, and we actually held the 180 SMA on this hourly chart, which is a very good sign. We also held, um, you know, 82.20, 82.30, which was a support level from um, this pull down, which was yesterday, which is another really good sign. So, uh, you know, in the time being, I think the NASDAQ is still looking bullish. Um, it's just simply kind of wiggling out right now. Um, you know, buying up, you're going to see periods of a couple of days, maybe even a day um, where the markets kind of cool off, chill out before either pulling down or running up. And that's kind of what I'm seeing here across all of the major markets, um, you know, the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ that I track on this channel. So, Overall, guys, you know, that's kind of what I'm looking at right now in terms of the markets. Let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts. I would love to know, just like always, guys, we are a community, so share your ideas down below so I can get uh, your opinions and then we can interact down there in that comment section. So let's talk about, um, you know, what I did today very quickly in terms of my trading and uh, what, what the natural gas report was looking like. Let's break that down. So what I did, guys, you know, in the title, you guys saw I bought a stock. Well, I bought more PayPal today, guys. Ticker symbol PYPL. And this is a stock that, you know, I, I've been eyeing up as a swing trade for a while now, right? Ever since, um, not really a long time, but ever since about 99 bucks before their earnings report, I've been looking to get into this stock, right? Because I saw how 99, 100 bucks was a very strong level of support. And I was looking for a positive earnings report to be that catalyst that gets us above the these moving averages that have been resistances over the past couple of months, right? And initially, you know, we did get that nice pop, that nice break out of the moving averages on a very strong earnings report from PayPal. I forget the numbers off the top of my head, but they beat on EPS and they beat on revenue. I'm pretty positive, right? So we got that spike up from 94, um, you know, up to about 108. And uh, to make a uh, long story short, you know, they failed holding the moving averages as a support and ultimately dumped below um, the moving averages again. But the positive thing is we didn't full on continue the downtrend by pushing to a lower low at this case, um, or at that at that point, you know, if we were to push to 90, that would have been the continuation of the downtrend, right? The positive thing is we held 100 bucks, which again, we double bottomed out a couple of weeks weeks ago, we held that before the earnings report. The fact that we're holding that here again, that's a good sign, right? So that's a good sign, you know, and now we're breaking above the moving averages, the 180, the 50 SMA, and we're kind of forming a pattern um, that's indicating, uh, that's really uh, uh, kind of showing um, what this trend line kind of arrow is showing here, right? That's kind of what we're doing. We're breaking out of the moving averages. And if we zoom in a bit even closer on this hourly chart, um, you can see it as well, right? The pull down 108, down to about 100. You can see how strong that support is. A couple of days of consolidation there. And now we're finally starting to break up. We're breaking above that 180 SMA. We hit a higher high today. Ultimately, I'd love to see a bullish cross, um, the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA here on the hourly chart. That is when I'd probably add even more money at that point. You know, uh, we may be even going up to the 105, 106 levels. And uh, that's kind of where I'm looking to add even more money. So I kind of was already in PayPal a couple of days ago, but today I bought more into it, right? I've been buying in, I've been scaling in, and I'm looking to swing trade this one. Um, first ideal target sell would be 110 bucks. I'd scale out more profits at 115 and ultimately exit the whole position. Um, 117 would be ideal. Maybe if we, if we ran up to 120, um, obviously that's where I'd look to just be completely out because at that point, you know, the swing's going to be up into the like 10, 15, 20% level, which is incredible. 
um, in my personal opinion. So PayPal right now, um, it's on the verge of breaking out. You know, we got that initial catalyst that spiked us up, that kind of pushed the momentum up. We got the pull down, which opened up that margin of profit. And ever since then, I've been waiting for this ramp up. And uh, now I'm just really buying heavily as the technicals are looking good. So PayPal, I'm in that one, guys. And that's pretty much all I ended up doing today um, in, in my trading. You guys know I'm in a bunch of swings right now. PayPal's one, uh, McDonald's, Chipotle. I'm in Facebook as well. Uh, I'm trying to think some of the other ones now. I'm forgetting. But there's definitely four or five stocks right now that I'm swing trading. Yesterday, I day traded Disney, which was an, a really good trade for me. Um, you know, I caught that move. I had a limit order at 140, sold at like 143. Um, so it's been good over the past couple of days, uh, you know, in terms of my trading. So now let's transition into natural gas. We'll talk about you gas, D gas. We'll do a breakdown, technical analysis, and we'll just talk about some notes that I have here on my phone regarding the natural gas report. So let's hop here on my Safari tab. And for those of you guys that don't know, this is where uh, you can see the natural gas report every Thursday, 1030 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right? Pretty much it's this link, ir.eia.gov, or you can simply just go to google.com, Google, right? And just Google natural gas report. And it should be one of the top links that do pop up there. So today on the week that ended um, the uh, 8th of uh, November, right? Because remember, these reports, they're kind of a week behind. So in, in a week, when we get the next report, it's going to be the week that ended today. So pretty much, uh, you know, the 14th, uh, from the 8th to the 14th in terms of natural gas storage, that's the report that we're going to get next week, right? So it's kind of one week behind. So the week that ended um, the 8th of November, we can see here, you know, all the different regions of the U.S. So the East, in terms of net change of of natural gas and it's measured in billion cubic feet also known as BCF zero net change week over week um, at 932 932 BCF for the east in the midwest we actually got a withdrawal of 3 BCF which is good for the bulls right that's what the bulls want to see now for you guys to go up they want to see withdrawals of natural gas so that's good the mountain no no change there net change week over week um, is zero at 207 billion cubic feet. Pacific, we also got a withdrawal um, of 2 BCF here from 292 last week uh, to 290 this week. South Central, we actually got an injection of natural gas, which is what the degas holders want to see of 8 BCF, which pushed us from uh, you know 1,189 BCF from the uh, the previous week up to 1197, um, you know, the week ending the 8th of November. Salt, non-salt, this was uh, 10 10 uh 10 BCF injection here for salt or yeah for salt uh two bcf withdrawal for non-salt and you can see the numbers regarding that and overall guys you know week over week in terms of all of these added up we got an injection of three billion cubic feet of natural gas, right? So from 3729 last week, 3,729, we raised to 3,732 in terms of billion cubic feet. So this just, just basing, uh, uh, you know, off this, that is, in my opinion, why, you know, you guys ended up seeing a dump right after the report, right? Because for you guys to go up, what many people want to see is withdrawals of natural gas. So if this number here was, let's say, negative 10 or something, right? That would have been extremely bullish for you guys. And at that point, I think it could have potentially flown up to 16, 1650, you know, 17 and even higher. But again, the initial reaction was that dump at 1030 because, again, that is a bearish um, report based on those brief numbers that we saw. So taking a look at some notes that I have here, the three BCF build recorded for this week, like I mentioned, was on the higher side of the consensus as expectations had ranged from a single digit withdrawal to a single digit injection. So the estimates were between um, a 9 BCF withdrawal and a 9 BCF injection. So what would that look like? You know, based on what the estimates were, it was pretty much between negative 9 for this number here, the net change, and positive 9. That's kind of what that means. And another note that I have here, which 
kind of is a good sign, I guess you can say, um, you know, for the bulls out there. A negative three, or rather a three BCF is bullish against the historical comparisons. As last year, EIA recorded a 42 BCF injection for the period, and the five-year average is a 30 BCF build, which we're obviously m much lower than that right now. We literally had a three BCF build, and based on those history numbers, historical numbers, rather, Rather, we're a lot, a lot lower. So that is where you kind of find that information, uh, you know, in terms of the natural gas report, you know, based on all of the different regions. And those are the numbers that heavily fluctuate what you guys and D gas do. Again, you know, let's say, for example, this number were to be, you know, 1015. Let's say we had a ridiculous injection this week. You know, you guys would be dumping through the floor, D gas would be flying up. But let's say we had a massive withdrawal let's say that number was negative 10 negative 15 whatever that would have been great for you guys so moving forward here kind of uh you know what am i looking for you know a lot of analysts and a lot of people have been expecting a withdrawal of natural gas in these next coming weeks so you know we saw the low con the, the 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 consensus was between negative nine and nine so kind of what i'm looking for here in terms of bcf what i'm looking for here moving forward is when are we going to get that withdrawal because once we start to get that withdrawal, you know, those, ne those negative numbers on the report, that is going to be what's going to drive you guys up, right? And, and at the end of the day, you know, when demand kicks in, that should happen and that's going to squeeze the price of natural gas. So that's kind of what I'm waiting for at this point, waiting patiently. So, you know, today you guys didn't really do much, you know, at the end of the day, down 60 points. We saw how choppy it was on the daily uh, on the daily chart. And again, that's due to the report. But ultimately, we're still downtrending. We're still trending below the moving averages here. The 50 SMA crossed below the 180 SMA, um, which is bearish. So, you know, until we start to ride back up into the, uh, you know, 16s, 17s, I'm not looking to touch you guys. And at this point, again, the report either next Thursday, the following Thursday, eventually we're going to get a withdrawal. And I think that's going to pop up you guys here. And on the flip side, you know, D gas. If we look at the price action, you know, it's actually breaking out, right? On the hourly chart, we're breaking above moving averages. So this is looking more bullish than you guys at this point. So that's kind of how we have to play it um, until things turn around, right? Natural gas right now, um, which is what you guys and you guys trade based upon, this is pretty much stuck between, you know, 260 and 270. We tried breaking 270 today, which would have been extremely bullish. We failed doing so. So again, we're just simply in this horizontal pattern, you know, and really the side that we pick in terms of direction, either up or down, it's really going to pick, in my opinion, the longer term trajectory for natural gas. So let's say, for example, we end up breaking out here and ultimately breaking above, you know, 270, 272, maybe even back up to 275. That's obviously going to be bullish, right? But let's say we fall down and ultimately break 260, which is going to be ugly, right? In terms of you gas holders and the bulls out there, you know, that obviously would be a bearish move. Move, D gas would be the play from there. So that's kind of the natural gas um, report breakdown, numbers to look at, kind of how things work, and the analysis of what you guys and D gas looked like today based on that report. And uh, really, every week, guys, it's 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 a volatile time. Um, every Thursday, rather at 10:30 a.m., it's volatile to trade these because you saw it, right? You know, it goes up, down, up, down after the report, and it's kind of difficult to uh, you know hop into it. But, you know, last week, if you guys remember, I actually timed the trade perfectly and I did really well on the report. But this week, I actually didn't do anything just simply on the sidelines watching and just analyzing, um, you know, the action. So let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts about that? And let's just hop quickly, rapid fire, guys, into some stocks that I'm watching now, um, you know, besides good old PayPal and UGAS and DGAS. So Qualcomm is one that I'm seeing is looking attractive 
perspective right now on this dip, right? They had an incredible earnings report a couple of days ago. They reported 78 cents of EPS, which beat the 71 cents expected. Their revenue was at 4.81 billion, which topped the 4.72 billion expectation. So they crushed earnings, guys. The stock clearly indicates that, right? Investors, traders, you know, that this thing went bananas after hours, right? It went from 84 all the way up to 94 in a matter of two, three days. Now we're cooling off down to about 90 bucks, and this could potentially be a higher low, right? Take a look at the pattern first and foremost of Qualcomm here, guys, right? You know, every time it seems like over the past couple of weeks that we've pushed to a high, we've consolidated a bit, we've cooled off for a couple of days afterwards before touching this 50 SMA and exploding upwards from there, right? I can literally count multiple instances we've done that. We hit the high here, 82 bucks. We cooled off for three days, rallied again. We hit a high, cooled off for two days, rallied again. Now it's been two, three, even I think it's been close to four days of, of cooling off here. So I'm ready for this next rally um, in Qualcomm. And honestly, guys, I think we'll get it. I'm pretty confident we'll get it because again, that earnings report, very, very good. Analysts, believe it or not, are increasing their price targets on Qualcomm. I saw one that was up into the 110s, 112s. So analysts love the stock right now. Seems like Wall Street's behind it for the most part. On top of that solid earnings report, I think this is a buy. Um, if we dip tomorrow into the 89s, 88s, that would be um, even more enticing in my opinion, but I'm just watching it very closely. Anywhere between 88, 90, 91 bucks even, I think is a good uh, level for Qualcomm. So another one is going to be Disney, guys. I actually traded this one again, like I mentioned um, yesterday, and Disney ran up to an all-time time high today at $150.63. And now it's now, you know, the stock's at levels that it hasn't been at ever since, um, you know, the, the end of July, pretty much, right? We hit a peak at 146 in July, sold off, you know, anybody that bought here, that ended up being a beautiful dip buy, as obviously we can see the stock has soared from there ever since the 10 million announcement yesterday uh, in terms of the Disney Plus signups in the first day, as well as that really good earnings report. Um, but anyway, you know, we broke 147 again, and it seems like now we're pulling down to hold that old all time high as a new support. So this ultimately could be a dip buy, um, you know, for Disney, uh, especially heading into tomorrow if we hold 146. 147. That is absolutely crucial. So from this level up to 150, believe it or not, guys, that's a 2.56% potential for profit, which I think is totally possible. Again, if we hold that 146 level. So I'm watching Disney here, um, you know, on the momentum. This is kind of like Qualcomm, right? Both really good right now. They're hot. Momentum's in their favor. Um, you know, the earnings are in their favor, all that good stuff. So I see a lot of potential in Disney um, right now. Another one is going going to be at V guys and we'll end the video off with this one ticker symbol ATVI this is Activision Blizzard guys this is also one that I, do I have it in my swing count I'm forgetting right now off the top of my head but I think you know this is one that I might be adding to my swing count or adding more um, because I do actually think I have a small position in at V already but either way I see a lot of potential in this one as it's trading in that horizontal pattern right we're clearly trading between 52 and 50 57 right now. We held the 52 level strong over the past couple of trading days heading into today as this did end up closing uh, up green today and honestly beating the market's performance up about 0.7%. This is a really good sign, right? If we go to the hourly chart, we can see again the definitive bottom at around 51, 50, 52 bucks. We're breaking out of that 50 SMA. Now I want to see the slow gap up to about that 180 SMA here on the hourly chart and ultimately a break out of there um, to sell off at about 55, 90, 56 bucks, maybe even 57 bucks. So at the right now, guys, you know, they reported good earnings in terms of EPS and revenue. They actually beat those numbers um, a lot, but the guidance wasn't that great. And the guidance is what dragged down that stock um, after their earnings, despite their earnings beating estimates, which is always a good thing, right? You want your stocks to beat earnings estimates. Um, that, that's a good sign. But again, the earnings, uh, uh, you know, the guidance 
wasn't that great. Stock dumped. But we're seeing some buying action right now, uh, you know, some buying power pushing the stock up. So I think it's worth watching here, um, especially if it holds this level and continues to climb into the 53s, 54s, etc. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content for me. And if you want to join our Strive Smart Discord group chat, 100% free community, as well as the Facebook group, those those are linked down below, as well as the Strive Smart merch, my personal Instagram, Twitter, all the good stuff's down below. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. As always, peace out.